All right. I am here for another interview for us about a story in the awesome Reinvented Heart. Today, I'm talking to Lyda Morehouse, who has a fabulous story called Sincerely Yours. Uh, one of the things I love about this story is it's the sort of story that I was thinking about uh, when I started putting the anthology together. It's a story of a relationship that I think is takes a sort of the traditional ending and changes it in, I think, a very good way. Um, in, so I'm just going to start by, let's talk about that. Like, what was the story's genesis? Oh, so many places. I mean, what's what's fun about this story for me as a writer is that I really got to pull in a lot of things that I was personally kind of wrestling with in the age of the pandemic. I mean, in so many ways, it's a story about the pandemic because um, I was struggling to figure out I'm an extrovert, uh, which is very unusual, I think, for writers in general. But uh, but like so I was struggling with trying to figure out how to stay close to friends. And one of the things I started doing, I started doing two sort of letter writing related things. One is that I have a very best friend, Naomi Gritzer, who I started a daily email with. We, we nice. still kept it up. We're still doing it, which is really fun. And it's just a conversation that builds every day. And it's it covers all sorts of things, you know, um, that's just happening in our lives and kind of making the parts of our lives that so many people during the pandemic wanted to label boring. Uh -huh. Like, you know, just figuring out what to eat today yeah. into something like a community thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, or at least a shared experience. And the other is, is that I actually write physical letters. I am, um, in the, during the pandemic, I re-upped with the international pen friends. Um, and so I started writing actual snail mail to strangers. Nice. <laughs> and there's something really uh, wonderfully connective when those things work. I mean, sometimes what's weird about that, of course, is that you're just, sending letters out into the world and the likelihood that you connect to somebody who you have an actual shared interest with is, you know, kind of, kind of iffy. And there are interesting, I mean, this probably gets into something we don't necessarily want to talk about, but it, it kind of informed this story in that it's sometimes really scary when you write, you wouldn't think it was scary to write to an international pen friend, but as a lesbian, I have found that if I bring up my relationship, I will lose pen friends. Yeah. Um, oh. And I'm also a pagan and a lot of people in the international pen friends want to ask things like, what did you do for Christmas? And I'm like, well, I didn't celebrate it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have yeah. less pen friends over that too. So, I mean, there's, there's a, there's a vulnerability to reaching out yeah. uh, to a stranger. And I really, I tried to tap into that a little bit, but then, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other things. I just, I called up a lot of the relationships in my life that, um, that has stayed strong. And that's what I wanted to write about how they might change in the future. So awesome. do you want me to talk about my, no, I, I, I'm enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> well, so I, I, I love, I love the fact that it's about writing letters because writing letters is in some ways a lost, not a lost art, but a dying art in particular in days when the post office is kind of in peril, it's a interesting thing. I send letters to my God kids periodically just so I, they can be like, ooh, physical mail. Um, but one of the things that your protagonist or your pen pals uh, bond over is fandom. Oh, so yes. how, how conscious was that? And how fun was it to sort of create the fandom that they discussed? Oh, super fun. <laughs> I uh, I am a big fan. I'm a, I am in fact an anime fan, which is why I went ahead and just sort of made my own anime up for that. Um, so that's a big part of it. And I actually have two extremely strong friendships. One is an online and has always been an online friendship um, that came out of my fandom of a particular anime called Bleach. It's back there behind me on the shelf. Um, and another one that interestingly, we uh, we became pen pals as through our fandom, um, which was odd because I have, I'm have i still on Dream With, which is the per, the, the post cursor, uh -huh. the thing that came after Live Journal. And at one point I was like, when I was starting to do some of this, uh, reaching out during the pandemic, I was like, who wants a letter? I will write you a letter once a week. You don't have to respond. I just want to write. And this one of this, the Canadian friend of mine, Anna, reached out and was like, yeah, let's let's talk bleach, you know, uh, by paper. 
<laughs> so we started doing that. And uh, in friendships, I just, the, the things that I describe in that story, very true to my own experience, which is, yeah, there's a lot of ship wars out there. But when you find that one fan that gets you, it can be super transformative to both your experience just with the show or whatever you're watching your book or, or, or comic or whatever. But also it can be like this really deep, strange, like you end up, and I'm sure you've had these experiences being somebody who's in, you know, science fiction, protom and fandom, where you just have this, like, like when somebody gets uh, something that you love about a character and you, you kind of end up talking about like your whole life and how it reflects yeah. in uh, fandom and in that fandom and, and in your life. And so they can become really deep friendships. And I also, uh, Tumblr died recently um, when it was taken over and a bunch of stuff got thrown out, especially GLBT content. And I was really active in the Bleach fandom right when that was happening. And so I had this real grief around what I lost in terms of a community that I kind of wanted to rekindle in this story too, because man, I, I miss part of it too, is that, that the, the manga stopped being written. And so people stopped, fell out of the fandom, but some of us had kept going and it felt like we were, uh, and then everything collapsed when, when Tumblr died, which was, I felt weird as an older person on Tumblr, but like, that's where my fandom was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and I think it makes sense that there are those deep connections about mm. in fandoms, because if there's something that you feel deeply about in a series, right, it's something that that's really kind of speaking to a core part of you. And so, at, you know, when you meet someone sort of of the same heart, there is, I think, a, a, a very uh, good intimate uh, connection uh, with at the same time that sort of weird online am i talking to a fish uh sort of right. <laughs> right right yeah yeah it can be again it's it's a little bit of a vulnerable thing right yeah. i had some role playing on tumblr which was also really weird for me um you know play the character answering questions mm -hmm. and that was very strange and I, that's unrelated but it was just one of those things that i was like yeah online interactions are kind of fascinating oh yeah oh there's so. there's so many graduate student theses uh, lying there and you just in sort of about presentation and, and consumption and construction of identity and all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh, I'm going to conclude by asking you a question, which is if you were looking back in time to your younger self, what is a piece of relationship advice you would give to them? Yeah, the, the, like the, the easy A, it would be, hey, Lottie, you're gay. But I'm actually not sure that I would give myself that advice back in 1980. Um, because what's, I, I mean, I've been thinking about this because, um, you know, I actually really think it was good for me as a young teen to have a lot of relationships with a lot of different people and mostly boys. I mean, because that was, it was heteronormative stuff that I was exploring, but I don't think I would have known what was really going on with me if I hadn't mm -hmm. had those experiences because I experienced a coming out that was really kind of uh it was it wasn't it was a soft turn in which I realized that um I liked men I still like men I have a lot of good male friends in my life um but what I discovered was the people who made me crazy were like uh -huh. <laughs> and I don't I, I don't think I'd have known that right I wouldn't have yeah. known that if I hadn't mm -hmm. had these like very lovely relationships with men previously. So that's not the advice I would give myself, no. despite the fact that one seems easy. I would tell myself to chill out. <laughs> yeah. That trust that it would all work out. Um, because I really didn't. I was very, I was a I was anxious. I I mean, the thing I did that I would remind myself to keep doing was journal. I did a lot of journaling as oh, a high yeah. schooler. Yeah. And I think it helped me like keep my emotions like in check. Cause you know, of course they're hormones what can you yeah, do oh god <laughs> so i mean so my advice would be sort of weird if you're like you got this kid it's it'd be like a dumb <laughs> little thing i'd go back and do this is why i haven't time traveled cat this is why <laughs> it's not worth it <laughs> it's not worth it it's funny. <laughs> surprise your day is really a surprise either <laughs> i kind of knew then i was kissing girls so i should have known that <laughs> it's usually a good clue right usually a clue <laughs> well that's a thing Oh, well, okay. well, that's, you know, I think that's good advice. All right. I am going to remind people that if you want to 
read Lida's amazing story, which I I love because it takes a traditional narrative where there's an anxious person in a friendship and then the friendship fixes the anxiety and uh, Lida does something very different. And I really appreciate that. I think it's a really cool changing of a narrative that we sometimes too often, I think, see. And so it's a really lovely story. So thank you so much for giving it to me. You're very welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right.